This is your election headquarters where we bring you up to speed with election related matters. You can also follow the conversation on social media with the hashtag election HQ. Now, flag bearer of the Convention People's Party, Ivor Greenstreet, says there's no need for any change in Ghana, but the country must go back to what Kwame Nkrumah started. The flag bearer, who was on PM Express on Joe News on Multi TV last night, said it is important for Ghanaians to vote the CPP for them to see the changes they need. And, and I go back, I don't want to go back to the days of Kwame Nkrumah, but just before he was overthrown, for goodness sake, we, 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 we were 95% there of building our gold refinery, you know, in Takwa. Okay, so we, we even built Tema oil refinery at that time with this expansive and great vision that that leader had. And so it tells you that it's about leadership, it's about courage, it's about determination. With the situation that we find ourselves in, we're struggling to make ends meet. That's why governors are having all these difficulties all the time with this strike or that strike or this complaint or that complaint or this problem or that problem. I mean, that's not going to be any different with the NPP because if the NPP came into office, which is why we are not in favor of our eyes for change, we're in favor of our change, which is the Sankofa change, to go back and pick those values and those principles which will give us different results as a nation. <laughs> One of the key things you know Convention People's Party represents and has a foundation of, the African personality. Mm. Now you all know what Dr. Kwame Nkrumah represents in that respect. Thing. And I know what you, you know, I've been listening <laughs> to your comments over a long period of time in that regard. And so, the, uh, you know, and that means looking within for your solutions, not always looking far into the distance where it's cloudy and nebulous, yeah. thinking the answer will come from come there, from there. Well, the answer is there. right here. Speaker of Parliament has directed the local government minister, Colin Stauder, to look into cases relating to the non-release of MPs' share of the Common Fund by district chief executives. This follows discrepancies in the outstanding monies yet to be released to the Member of Parliament for Ituma Impunua Isaac Isiama. Elton John Brobe is in Parliament for John News. We'll get back to him. Uh, we, I hear that we haven't been able to establish a good line yet. So when we get out in, we'll get some details on that story. Meanwhile, uh, let's do some other stories here on join News Today. Presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Nana Kufado, is starting his campaign tour of the Ashanti region today. The region is seen as the stronghold of the opposition party, and this campaign is quite an important one on the calendar of the MPP. Inshira FM's Ohiming Terrier has put the following report together on the campaign. This will be the second time this year the flag bearer is touching base with party supporters and other voters in the MPP traditional electoral World bank. At least three independent candidates from the MPP stock are seeking to do battle with party sponsors contestants. The affected constituencies are Adansi Asukwa, Achuma Kwangoma and Suta Kwamai Bevoso. Menshianov until recently was considered one of the trouble spots of the party. Constituency primaries delayed for about a year following a protracted dispute. NPP regional chairman Bernard Nchibu Siako, also known as Chairman Wuntumi, was arrested for assaulting the party's MP for the area, Collins Osa Mankwa. Mr. Pine says several factors went into the selection of the constituencies. The visit is basically on a campaign tour and he's going to visit some constituencies. Is going to interact with party supporters, sympathizers, and other people within those constituencies. He's going to have interaction with traditional authorities, and he's also going to have interaction with some Zongo communities and opinion leaders in those communities. And he's, he'll be here to sell the message of hope and what he, he's going to do as regards job creation. I'm looking at the national health insurance, how it's collapsing within the region and Ghana in totality. Um, the payment of analysis and teacher training allowances. And all that they've been speaking on, and other matters that will crop up. Um, he's been, he been in the region, he's been going to places um, where it's important to visit because of certain matters. Yes, you do that. Um, these are areas that we've slated already for him to visit. and. Um, it could be a reason, but uh, still, he was bound to go there, notwithstanding the 
emergence of an independent candidate or not. So he's going to be in the consensus to talk to the people and look at all these matters. Meanwhile, Mr. Pine dismisses suggestions Nanado's visit is prompted by last Sunday's NDC regional campaign launch. He describes the ruling party's 1.5 million vote target in the region as daydreaming. Nana planned his visit to the region way before the NDC uh, launched their, their campaign. The NDC in the first place was even supposed to launch their campaign on the, I think on the 8th of October or so. I don't know what pushed it to last week. But it had nothing to do with that. I mean, when they talk about 1.5 million votes in the Ashanti region, it gives some, some, some quixotic uh, adventure by the NDC. I mean, <laughs> you cannot phantom it. This is a, it's a, it's a region where the president himself have described the people of the region as ungrateful. And the NDC goes about touching themselves with built that, with constructing this, with doing this. If the people are ungrateful, how are they going to be show gratitude for such things? So in the first place, per the president's own analysis, he's not going to get the votes. Two, couple with the, um, the, 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 the effects of the four-year uncontrolled doom so on businesses, people who have lost their lives, people who are breaking under the load of bank loans, people who um, factories and businesses have collapsed, the people have been made unemployed. My colleague Erastus Asara Donko is a man on the ground to bring us up to speed with that uh, tour of the Ashanti region by the MPP's flag bearer Nana Kufuado. Well, it was expected that he would have arrived in the region by now. Uh, he will tell us if that is so and where he'd be expected to visit today. Meanwhile, President Mahama is continuing with his five-day tour of the Volta region today. It's day three of his tour. Let's get the latest on this. Ivy Setoji is our reporter following the president. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Can you tell us where uh, the president has been so far and where he's heading next? Well, we seem to have a challenge with our lines today. We'll try and raise uh, Ivy on the line again and get some updates here on Joy News today. We take a quick break. There's more news after this. Many thanks for staying here on Joe News today. Now, presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Nana Kufuado, is starting his campaign tour of the Ashanti region today. Now, that particular region is seen as the stronghold of the opposition party. And obviously, his campaign there is seen as an important one on the calendar of the NPP. Love FM's Erastus Asari Donko uh, joins me on the phone line with more. Hello Erastus. Now we know that um, Nana Kufodo was supposed to arrive at midday. Is he in the city? Well we are still expecting Nana Donko Kufodo to start down. We are at the airport now. Uh, we have quite a number of people here. Um, many of the regional executives are here and they are led by Chairman Untini, the regional chairman himself and uh, they are waiting for him to touch down. Um, he will be going to a uh, uh, from here, and then he will also address a demo of peace at uh, Fede. In the evening, we are expecting a huge rally at Abwabo uh, within the Atuanti constituency, and that is the itinerary uh, for today. So quite a number of people have gathered here. But when you go to town itself, to Massey itself, uh, the, 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 you can see the euphoria um, surrounding his visit. Many people have branded their private vehicles with the NTT colors. Uh, you, you can find a number of people who are dressed in NTT paraphernalia. Uh, and, and so you anticipate that, uh, that he will have quite a following when he touches down. So currently we are waiting uh, for him to touch down. Erastus, how long is he expected to be in, in the region and is there any plans of meeting supporters in the form of a rally or anything of the sort? Yeah, exactly. He's going to spend four days uh, here and the first of the itinerary is what I told you. There will be a rally 
at Abuabo in the evening after uh, the twelfth of day. There will be a rally at Abuabo uh, per the itinerary that I have. Mm. And so we are expecting that in the coming days we'll be going to other areas as well. All right. Thank you very much, Erastus. That's my colleague Erastus Asaridonko in the Ashanti region, giving us some updates of uh, the MPP's flag burn, Anakufuado's tour of that particular region. Meanwhile, President Mahama is continuing his five-day tour of the Volta region. It's day three today, and uh, we'll get some latest on this from Ivy Setaji. She is our correspondent on the ground. Hello, Ivy. Ivy, if you can hear me, if you can briefly tell us where the president has visited and where he's heading next. Well, Hello. Hi, Ivy. Yeah. Yes, Hello. thanks for joining us. Can you tell us briefly where the president has visited today and where he's heading next? Well, the president was at Hope a municipality. He just finished uh, his rally uh, as the Hope municipality. Uh, he's been saying that... Uh, Conversation will be made available to uh, people, persons affected in the riot some few years back between the Geese and then the jungle community. And also, uh, he's going to make available for seedlings and fertilizers so that farmers can have, especially the cocoa farmers, can have access to all these things uh, so that that can boost their farming activities. And also, uh, he's promising the people of the Volta region that the rules that they have been complaining about, uh, they are doing, the government is going to do something urgent about it. All he's asking is that they should maintain him, they should work for NDC again so that he can continue with all the developmental work started by the NDC. Well, we know the General Secretary, Asadian Ketia, has been saying some pretty interesting stuff there. Can you share with us? Yes, he, he told the people, especially in the voter region, that if you know you're a resident or your family uh, are in Togo, uh, but they are Ghanaian, it is not a crime for them to cross over when it's time for election, that they should be free and come back home and vote uh, uh, in December 7th. They shouldn't worry about anything because they are Ghanaian. And that should, that, that should not bother them at all because being in Togo, don't make anyone less a Ghanaian. Mm, and that's, those were statements made by uh, Johnson and Siedwin Ketia. Thank you very much, Ivy Setaji. Uh, she was bringing us some updates of the president's tour of the Volta region. Let's still stay on the campaign uh, trail. The chief of staff, Julius Debra, is in the Buno Ahafu region, and Precious Semevo is there for us. Hello, Precious. Now, can you tell us where he is and what he's been saying? Well, this is, we are still on our way to uh, 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 Intra in the Wenchi district. That is where they too, uh, of the chief of staff, you know, taking uh, him. Now, at Intra, he will be inspecting a senior high school uh, at Intra and also uh, have an interaction with the chiefs and people of uh, Intra. Thereafter, uh, he will have a community there at uh, Tubinso and uh, also move to Kofu. Uh, and uh, also inspect a community day school there. But uh, yesterday, uh, the chief of staff uh, on that day, one of uh, his it, it took him to Pintampo North, uh, where they went to uh, Busunya, uh, year three, uh, among other towns that he visited. Now, the chief of staff uh, said that the citizenry of uh, year three and then in Kwanza uh, should vote and endorse uh, President John Mahama massively, uh, considering the fact that their own, that is uh, the wife of the president, uh, is coming from uh, that part of the country and uh, she has what it takes uh, to be for developmental projects uh, for them. Now, after the chief of uh, staff speaks, the regional minister was also uh, online uh, to address the gathering at uh, year three. And uh, he uh, said that the NPP, they've always been complaining about developmental projects, but as far as the years, they never uh, put up a single school at the secondary level, nor at the uh, level. Now, Professor Famina Ahoy was the one who had a serious problem with the one district, one factory, one district, one dam policy that has been uh, you know, thrown out there by the MPP. Now, he says that they can comfortably talk about that because the infrastructure base has already been developed 
uh, by President John Ramani Mahama in terms of water, road, electricity, mm. uh, and others. So they, they can comfortably talk about that. But uh, he said that if that is the policy they're talking about, considering a town like Tema and then in Kwanzaa, Tema has a lot of factories there. Are they going to add one factory there and mm. then bring one factory uh, to in Kwanzaa? Perpetually, the discrepancy in terms of uh, factories in the district uh, would not uh, be powerful. So he believes that they do not uh, have the strategy what it takes uh, to improve the lot of the people. And I'm sure today uh, it will continue. And uh, when we get to our first stop, whatever they say will bring right. it to our list. All right, Precious. Now, we know the Bnu Ahafu region. Well, the NDC has focused a lot on that region. They launched their manifesto there. And uh, the chief of staff is on his second day in, in tour in that particular region. What has the reception been? Hello, Hello Precious. Yes. yes. What has the reception been from the people of the region? Well, this is the reception. Uh, every hamlet, village, and uh, town that we've been to uh, has been massive. Uh, people are there to welcome the uh, chief of staff and then uh, his entourage. Uh, if, you, if you talk to them, what they, what they say and the feeling you get from them is that they are content and satisfied with the level of uh, development that they have witnessed. Uh, within their community, although mm. uh, they believe that a lot more needs to be done, and uh, that is why they are rooting and uh, following the NDC and uh, the chief of staff and his team. Thank you very much, Precious. We'll touch base with you later in the day to give us some updates of that particular tour. Now, away from the campaign trail, Speaker of Parliament Edward Dojaho has directed the local government minister, Colin Stauder, to look into cases relating to the non-release of MPs' share of the Common Fund by district chief executives. This follows discrepancies in the outstanding monies yet to be released to the Member of Parliament for Etuma Impunya Isaac Isiama. Elton John Brobe is in Parliament for joining us. Hello, Elton. Hi, Benny. Well, can you tell us more about this particular issue developing? I'm sure we're aware this has been a running issue between members of parliament and district chief executive over the release of the share of the common fund. Usually, the administrator will send the money to the district assembly, and then the MP, in asking for the utilization of the money, will always have to write letters to the district chief executive directing the DCE to release the money to uh, this or that sector to pay for one or two projects. But usually, uh, some of these DCs have been foot dragging in releasing the money to the assembly. So this morning, the member of parliament for Achuma Mponwa, Isaac Siyama, uh, asked the local government and uh, rural development minister what may have occasioned the delay by the district chief executive of Achuma Mponwa in giving effect to a request uh, by him for his share of the common fund to be disbursed for some stated purposes and projects. Now, interestingly, the local government minister in his response says that there is, as far as he uh, is concerned, there is no outstanding payment to be made to the honorable member uh, as far as their, 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 their records are concerned. Mm. For example, he told the parliament that uh, an amount of 73,000 Ghana cities was released to him by the district assembly common fund out of the amount. Uh, the assembly has paid some money to, uh, to cover some projects being undertaken by the member of parliament. So there is no outstanding money yet uh, to be given to the MP. But mm -hmm. the MP countered it by saying that uh, as far as his records also stands, uh, the assembly has in his account about 45,000 Ghana yet to be utilized and is requested uh, for the utilization of the money since January to date, but no you know, effect uh, has been done by the district chief executive indeed. This particular concern got some members of parliament uh, uh, to, you know, to contribute to uh, this stalemate between district chief executives and members of parliament in the utilization of the district assembly's common fund. The local government minister, who was relying on correspondence between him and the district chief executive, said that he will have to go back to his office, cross-check the facts as presented by the MP before he can come to, you know, an amicable resolution of the matter. The speaker. Uh, a former member of parliament uh, also contributed and said that, I mean, this is a matter that must be resolved one way or the other. So he directed the local government minister mm. to get in touch with the administrator to, you know, look at how much is outstanding, why some district chief executives are adamant in releasing the money to the MPs or 
uh, to undertake their development in their constituencies so that this matter can be done with once and for all. all right. The minister has up to uh, next week Wednesday to report back to parliament on steps being taken to resolve this particular impasse. Thank you very much, Elton. But before you go, we know when uh, the House resumed, there were calls for uh, MPs to report to the House because a lot of them were absent. Any, you know, update on that? That's for a fact that the situation has not improved. As a matter of fact, as I speak to you right now, they are, they, they are considering the local government bill. Uh, this bill is to, you know, uh, enhance the operations of the decentralization process. But on the floor itself, members of parliament who are contributing to uh, the bill, they are not even up to the one third required for this debate to take place in the first. We don't even form a quorum for business to take place. Mm. We have less than 50 members of parliament on the floor right now. Uh, it appears that the leaders have not been successful in getting their members to come to parliament. Remember that tomorrow is a crucial day because the, the finance minister will have to come before the house and present uh, revenue and estimates for 2017 and parliament will be called upon to approve for the first three months to enable uh, the government that will come into force after the December election to have money to spend for the first three months. We are waiting to see whether the two thirds members of parliament required to pass such a resolution uh, will be on hand tomorrow to do mm. justice to the business. But for now, the attendance is still a major issue facing Parliament. All right, thank you very much, Elton John Brobe. He's, he was bringing us some updates from Parliament. You're watching Join News today. There are more stories right after this.